Happy Blue Moon Halloween. Not a paid sponsorship. Salute. I'm going to use Drunk Tarot as a hashtag, but it's total clickbait. My first beer. I said I was taking a break from the channel. It was about a three day break. I saw other YouTubers going on camera with their costumes and their makeup and their wigs, so I thought I would just jump on the little bandwagon. People who do this full time, goths, clowns, drag queens, they get total respect for me because there are so many components to this. I mean, I keep getting makeup and the hair and the wig. So gross. Camera intelligence. Okay. It's a lot of work. And I just half-assed this. It took maybe 10 minutes to do this makeup. I was watching a goth makeup tutorial and she had a lot of ingredients or a lot of things that I don't have, like a pore filler and just all this professional shit. I got this for my son for his Joker makeup for Halloween. All the professional clowns use this, apparently. And I'm just using stuff I already had. I thought instead of black lipstick, I would go out on a whim and wear blood red lipstick. Oh god, it's too much. How do people do this? Well, I watched a tutorial on how to make sugar skull cookies with marshmallow fondant. That was a failure. The cookies tasted good. They looked terrible. I'm just not a Pinterest mom, and I'm not a goth, and I'm not a clown, and I'm not a drag queen. I'm just a basic bitch. Okay. Oh, man, it's a lot of work. Oh, God. So we're going to have our annual Samhain feast. My ex-husband, he puts the meat on the grill around midnight. We leave food out for the ancestors under the tree. We've done this since we were dating in 2004. Okay. Last night, I had some candles lit. And I said, okay, we're going to read... The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe as a family, and my son wanted to do VR with his friends, so it didn't happen. But tonight, we're going to do The Raven, and we're going to carve the jack-o'-lantern, and we're going to watch The Thing, the original The Thing. And we'll have our feast. Sausage, chicken, steaks, with corn on the cob mushrooms and butter. Got a fuck ton of candy. Milky Way is my new favorite candy bar. The Reese's Pumpkins are my favorite, but they are getting harder and harder to find. Um, but we're going to eat our asses off. I'm going to eat my ass off this weekend, That I'm going back into rigid OCD conscious eating, mindful eating mode with the detox broth and the smoothies and the fasting. Um, I want to do a 48 hour dry fast every week. A 48 hour dry fast is nothing. It's easy. If you have a life like mine, which is mostly sedentary, I sleep a lot. I don't exercise. So um, 48 hour dry fast, which means no food, no liquids. It's super fucking easy. could do it in my sleep because I sleep a lot. I'm about to burp. Okay, I had this idea to do a tarot reading. Spooky couples. Kurt and Courtney. Everyone knows all the controversy around Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Um, I've seen the documentaries I think the first one was called Kurt and Courtney, and then I saw Soaked in Bleach. Um, and I saw a montage of Heck, which 
I did a video at my main channel and I called it Montage of Drag because I think it's terrible. I think it's absolute shit. Um, I did enjoy seeing the home videos of Kurt and Courtney, but the rest of it was like an extended MTV video. I saw shit that I'd already seen on MTV a million times, so... Um, I had very mixed feelings and opinions. Um, Soaked in Bleach presents a very strong case against Courtney Love. But I guess I'm naive. I never got into the conspiracies on anything. I'm just not a conspiracy theory kind of person. You know, there are a lot of people putting stuff out there uh, on YouTube saying that the Satanists are running Hollywood and uh, celebrities don't actually kill themselves. They're killed because they know too much or they're talking too much. I don't believe all that bullshit. I don't believe that Elvis is still alive. I had this t-shirt when I was a teenager and it had Elvis in a spaceship and it said, I saw Elvis in a UFO. It was just fun, you know. I don't believe in the reptilians and the lizards and all that. So, my thing is this. If a high-profile celebrity like Kurt Cobain was killed by another high-profile celebrity, Courtney Love, if she really put a hit out on him or whatever, um, I just feel like she would have been taken to court for that. I don't feel like she would have gotten away with it. Um, he was very close to his mom. She's very supportive of Courtney Love. They have a relationship. I don't know. I don't know these celebrities. It's just what I've read. I mean, what do any of us know other than what we've read and what we've seen? So, I'm not getting too deep into it. I'm just asking the cards. Oh, and I talk about the moon and Mercury and Sinistry a lot at my channel. So, for these couples, Kurt and Courtney, Jim Morrison and Pamela Corson, and Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen, I looked up their moon and Mercury. And for Jim and Pam... Their sinistry was really mediocre. It was really lackluster. And there are astrologers who say, if you see these couples who have a really intense connection or a long-lasting relationship, the sinistry is mediocre. Look to the composite chart. And they could have really good stuff going on in the composite. But anyway, um, looking at Jim and Pam's moon Mercury, I thought something else is going on there because their connection was so intense and so karmic. I said, I bet they had Moon Pluto, and sure enough, I looked it up, and Pam's Pluto at 13 Leo squared Jim's Moon at 9 Taurus. I was doing a reading for a client yesterday, and the cards I was getting, I said, I bet that you and your love interest have Moon Pluto. I looked it up. Yeah, they had the Moon Pluto square. I've experienced it twice with two different men I regard as soulmates. I've talked about it numerous times in my channel. Both of these men have, or one had, he's dead. They had their uh, Pluto and Virgo conjunct my moon and Virgo. If you have any moon Pluto contacts in your sinistry, it's going to be super intense. The square, the opposition, the conjunction. Maybe not the sextile or the trine, I don't know. I just know that from what I've seen, the conjunction, opposition, and square are super felt, deeply felt, super intense. Please show in six cards, and I'm not wearing my glasses because they fuck up the makeup. Please show in six cards what was going on between Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love at the time of Kurt Cobain's death. Six cards.
Nine of Wands, Page of Wands, Five of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, Ace of Swords. So I'm seeing psychic exhaustion. Nearing the completion of a cycle. Eight of Cups, walking away. Five of Pentacles. They had exchanged all the energy they could. And... What I get from this, and I'll get clarifiers, yeah. is that I'm trying to articulate this in the best way. Okay. His death was like a fuck you to Courtney Love. Okay. Um. They were not on the same page. They were not in sync. They were not in love at the time of Kurt Cobain's death. There was lack. There was psychic poverty. So, you know, I'm biased here because I've read so much and I've seen the documentaries and all that because I was a huge Nirvana fan. When I found out that Kurt had died, I cried for three days straight. I listened to Nevermind over and over again, and I just sobbed. But by all reports, I've heard this, I've read this, seen it in numerous interviews, they were in the process of getting a divorce at the time of Kurt Cobain's death. And why Courtney Love in Montage of Heck babbles on about how they would have had more children together and she you know I used to look at her Instagram and see how she would post things on his birthday or whatever and say how much she missed him I just think she's I think she's in delusion or she's in denial um, but they were in the process of getting a divorce at the time of his death um, and in the documentary Soaked in Bleach his suicide letter to me does seem really fake. It seems really strange. It's really strange for a suicide letter because his suicide letter was more to the fans than it was to his wife and child. They just got a little, a few lines, you know, they were barely mentioned in the suicide letter. That doesn't make any sense to me. Speaking from my perspective, someone who has been on the psych ward a few times, someone who has struggled with depression and anxiety and suicidal ideations, I know if I was going to really go through it, that I was really going to kill myself, and I was writing a letter, um, I know I don't really have success or fame, but um, I wouldn't be thinking of anyone really other than my son if I was going to kill myself and that's who my letter would be to which I would never do that as hard as my life has been I drew a line in the sand and I said I'm not going to leave that legacy for my son I'm not going to kill myself because I'm saying that's okay and he can do it and I'm not judging Kurt Cobain or anyone who commits suicide because I know how hard it can be when you're struggling with mental illness or just the 3d life in general without a diagnosis Anyway, beyond all that, beyond conspiracy theories and documentaries and what I've seen in interviews, I see that Kurt Cobain was hungry for a change. His life could not continue the way it was going. He felt an ungodly amount of pressure. He was very ambitious 
I'm going back to the books that I've read and all that. I'm not speaking to the cards. I'll try to stop that. He didn't become famous by accident. Okay, it was very purposeful, but he regretted that choice. He regretted being on that path because it was not what he expected. Um, it was like a wheel and he wanted to get off the wheel. The noise, the chaos, the, the spotlights, it was, it was too much. He didn't want it. He wanted to just create his music and create his art in peace and do what he really felt. He was not a fake. He was anti-fake. He was all about the authenticity. So he had his moon at 13 Cancer, his Mercury at 18 Pisces. My Mercury is at 14 Pisces. When you have your Mercury in Pisces, and certainly with a Cancer moon, I would say you can't play the game for very long because you're going to be authentic. You're going to be hypersensitive. And that combo was not created for the MTV spotlight, that intense scrutiny and, and judgment. He wanted to hide. He wanted to leave it. He wanted to leave the bright lights. He wanted to leave the fame. And he felt like the only way he could do that was by checking out, by killing himself. A moment of truth, a moment of clarity. Uh, him choosing something different. Maybe he chose his death. Maybe he did commit suicide. That's inconclusive here. Um, I just see very clearly here that he was very hungry for a change. He was beyond exhausted. And he didn't have this balance. And he and Courtney did not have this balance in their marriage. They did not have mutuality. Um, I feel like they were both ready for a change. They both wanted to walk away from this. And what brought them together initially, because it starts with Nine of Wands, Page of Wands, was this super intense sexual attraction. Um, you know, they both had a lot of water in their charts. Uh, Courtney has her moon at 23 Cancer. I know her son is in Cancer. Kurt's son was in Pisces. So her moon at 23 Cancer is not conjunct Kurt's moon, but they both have moon and Cancer. And her Mercury is at one Leo. So their Mercury's did not aspect. I would say from memory, what I remember seeing her chart that her chart is a lot more extroverted than Kurt's was. I know she has something in Gemini. I forget if it's Mars or Venus, maybe both, but she has the chart of someone who never shuts their fucking mouth. So. And Kurt was a sixth house, or he had a son in the sixth house, the house of Virgo. I have the same thing. I have Sun and Venus and Aquarius in the sixth house. He was all about the work, no frills. He didn't like the trappings of fame. That didn't really appeal to him. He was not especially materialistic, and Courtney Love is uber materialistic. She loves the trappings of fame, from what I've seen and what I've read. Um, so, at the time of Kurt Cobain's death, he was exhausted. There was no balance. He wanted to change. Please clarify Nine of Wands or Two of, two of Pentacles, one card. Four of Pentacles. Courtney Love wanted him to keep producing. She wanted him to be a workhorse. He was the goose that laid the golden egg. She was all about it. And again, going back to what I've read, what I know, she staged that intervention before he went to the rehab facility in Los Angeles. She basically bullied him into getting off drugs, which is ironic because she was on drugs herself. Um, 
but it's like she's saying, bitch, you're going to work. You're going to do Lollapalooza. You're going to do whatever. You're going to keep cranking out those top 10 hits. Keep making those MTV videos, bitch. She was a Spengali. Please clarify page of wands over eight of cups, one card. Ace of Pentacles. Quite the emphasis on money here. The first documentary, they interviewed the former nanny, and she talked about how creepy it was working for them in that house in Seattle, how Courtney was always talking about his will. She said there was way too much will talk. So there is quite the emphasis on money in this spread. Um, if they had gotten a divorce, Courtney Love was going to lose a lot. Please clarify Five of Pentacles over Ace of Swords, one card. Six of Pentacles. I'm seeing a divorce. And I don't think Kurt Cobain would have had any problem whatsoever with just giving Courtney everything, giving her the house. Um, I feel like he would have given her full custody of Francis just out of guilt. He felt like he was a terrible father, and she made him feel that way. She made him feel guilty about being a shitty dad because of his addictions. and um, Apparently, he dropped Francis once when she was a baby, and... Courtney Love just really gave him hell about that. He would have given her whatever she asked for. He just wanted out. He was done. I'm going to get the playing cards. Please provide an energetic summation, three additional cards. What was going on between Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love at the time of Kurt Cobain's death? Three more cards. Four of Swords. He was ready for a break. He needed a retreat. He wanted to hide. Four of Pentacles. He was not in this energy. This was Courtney Love. She wanted to hold on to the goose that laid the golden eggs. Um, she wanted to hold on to the money. Seven of Cups. Delusion. I call this Neptune Clouds of Confusion. This is very Pisces. Kurt had Sun and Mercury in Pisces. Um, he was believing the lies when he died. He was believing that he was worthless. He was a terrible father. He was a terrible human being. He had no worth. He had no worth because all the success was so much ashes in his mouth. Uh, he was very hungry for fame. He was very hungry for success. He was very methodical in how he plotted that path. He was very smart, and he worked his ass off. That's sixth house, Virgo. Any Virgo in your chart or anything, if you have anything in the sixth house, you don't play. You're very goal-oriented. But when he got what he wanted, he said, I don't actually want this as Courtney Love sings in Violet. When I get what I want, I never want it again. And that came from something that Billy Corgan told her or wrote in a letter. When you get what you want, will you ever want it again? I 
I've read a lot of books about this. One of the best Christmas gifts I ever received. I was on the plane going home from Las Vegas to Dallas in 1994 with my uncle who died of lung cancer in 1999. We were on the plane going home and I was in a horrible mood because I had had a week of fantasy in Las Vegas, just drinking and smoking and winning all this money and seeing Vince Gill in concert at Caesars Palace and I had to go back to the cold hard reality of leaving for basic training because I left for basic training in the Army um, December of 94. I went to South Carolina, Fort Jackson for basic training. Anyway, I was in a terrible mood, but I was looking through a Rolling Stone magazine and I said, oh, there's a book about Kurt Cobain. I want that. I said something along those lines, how I wanted the book on Kurt Cobain. And that was all that was said. And then my uncle gave me that book for Christmas. It's the book that Rolling Stone put together. It's like a coffee table book and it's got um, stuff on Nirvana and Kurt Cobain. It's got photographs. I still have that book. Anyway, um, when Kurt Cobain died, he was not grounded in reality. His reality tunnel was very narrow and very dark. He felt like he was doing everyone a favor by just checking out. Um, that's through the bias of me believing that it, it was a suicide. I believe that he was bullied into killing himself. I don't believe that Courtney Love put a hit out on him. I don't believe that she hired someone to kill him. I believe that he was bullied into suicide, and she certainly played a part. And I feel like all the problems she's had subsequently through the years with um, relapse, drugs, and all of that, I feel like I don't know the woman, but what I perceive is that she's eaten alive with guilt because she knows she was complicit. She played a part in Kurt's death. They could have had a divorce. And she would have gotten a lot, but apparently not enough to her satisfaction. Um, she wanted Kurt to keep churning out the hits, keep working. She put a lot of pressure on him. MTV put a lot of pressure on him. All the people who had their money, their fingers in the pie, who um, they were invested in Kurt Cobain staying in Nirvana. Okay, so a lot of people were complicit in his death, but he was absolutely clouded. His intuition was clouded. He, he thought that he was worth nothing. He was just, he was believing the lies when he died. And I don't see much love between him and Courtney Love at the time of his death. Now, I was obsessed with the doors for a while. I mean, after I saw Oliver Stone's movie in 1991, my senior year of high school, I got all the doors records, I got all the biographies, and I went down the rabbit hole. I was just obsessed. I had a poster of Jim Morrison hanging on the wall of my dorm when I started college at Texas State in San Marcos. And I was always fascinated by the relationship between Jim and Pam. Pamela Susan Corson. She was a Capricorn. Jim was Sagittarius. So Jim had his moon at 9 Taurus, his Mercury at 0 Capricorn. Pam had her moon at 22 Sagittarius, her Mercury at 13 Sagittarius. And as I said earlier, her, her Pluto at 13 Leo made a tight square to, or not a tight square, but a square to Jim's moon at 9 Taurus. Um, 
it's like I say in my readings a lot, always look for a tight orb of five degrees or less. So technically it was tight. Um, four degree orb. But when it comes to an outer planet like Pluto, I think the orb should be tighter than that ideally. But I'm sure they felt the intensity of that moon Pluto square regardless. Okay. So, as I said in a previous video, I think the video I did on Brad Pitt buying my Chicken McNuggets, um, which he never did, but according to the cards, if I were to meet Brad Pitt at McDonald's, he would pay for my McNuggets because he would be so smitten. Okay. I was so obsessed with the doors that I left a message on some woman's machine in New York. I thought it was Patricia Canelli, the woman that Jim Morrison married in a Celtic hand fasting ceremony. Um, then I wrote a letter to Patricia Canelli, and she wrote back and said that I got the wrong Patricia because her number had been unlisted since the 70s. But it was a very kind, gracious letter. Total love. She wrote it on parchment paper with purple ink. Um, looks like calligraphy. She had Lizard Queen Productions as the letterhead. Total love. I was, I was honored. Uh, she was the inspiration for me getting into Wicca and getting my first Rider Waite tarot deck in 1991. Then years later, when I got my first computer and I got online for the first time in 2000, uh, I was going to say that I was Googling. This was before Google. There was no Google in 2000. It was Yahoo, right? I don't think we had Google in 2000. Anyway, I was doing a search and I found Patricia Canelli's blog and she wrote about how a fan, and she used quotation marks, a fan sent her this disgusting letter and she threw up in her mouth and, I mean, it was she was obviously talking about me, how I had tried to call her, I got the wrong number, and she was just very bitchy and uh, nasty. And so me being me, I have to have the last word. I sent her another letter and I told her how I had defended her for years to people who said that she was just trash. She was one of Jim's flings and she sent me another letter back and that ended it. That ended it. Um, it was just very weird. But what I've seen of her online over the years, all that I read about her is that she is a very nasty, vindictive, deluded person, and she has it in her mind that she was the great love of Jim's life, and she's said terrible things about Pam. Anyway, again, I don't know these people, you know. Um, I'm not really emotionally invested. There was controversy over Jim's death. People have said that you know, it's well established that Pam was a junkie and she had this mound of China white, you know, heroin in their Paris apartment or hotel or whatever. And uh, Jim thought that it was cocaine and he snorted it and he got in the tub and he died of a heart attack. So the way Patricia Canelli paints it, Pam murdered Jim, okay? So, I'm just going to ask the cards what was going on between Jim and Pam at the time of his death. Was it July 3rd, 1971? I know his birthday, December 8th, 1943, I think. I know he was born December 8th because that's my daughter's birthday. 
I don't talk about my daughter much at this channel because um, I didn't raise my daughter. I placed her for adoption. Um, I was alone. I was pregnant. I didn't want to raise my daughter on food stamps and Medicaid and WIC. I was a Christian at the time, 1996. Abortion was not an option for me. So I interviewed numerous couples that in my fifth month of pregnancy, I thought she was a girl, and I sent a letter and pink bubblegum cigars to the couple that I chose to raise my daughter. So December 8th, Please show in six cards what was going on between Jim Morrison and Pamela Corson at the time of Jim's death. What was the energy between Jim Morrison and Pamela Corson at the time of Jim's death? Seven of Wands, some decks, that's Mars and Leo, Nine of Pentacles, Temperance, that's Sagittarius card, Nine of Swords, Four of Swords, Three of Wands. I'm not seeing a happy, blissful, loving, harmonious relationship. They were fighting. It was very imbalanced. Um, Pam was very codependent on Jim, and I'm going beyond the cards here. I've read so many books. I know this front and back. I know what was going on, so I'm putting my bias into this, but um, they weren't a happy couple when he died. Um, there was this psychic distance between them. Um, they weren't balanced. They weren't in love. We have no cup cards here. It begins and ends with fire. Seven of Wands. Three of Wands. Pam was not lighting Jim's fire. He wasn't in love with her when he died. Um, he felt this karmic obligation. He felt like he needed to take care of her. He did leave his estate to Pam. She was his heir. Uh, he felt this moral, karmic obligation but he wasn't in love with her. He didn't have any respect for her. He knew that she couldn't make it on her own, and she didn't. I mean, shortly after Jim died, maybe three years after he died, she OD'd on heroin. She was a wreck. She was a mess. Um, I know that it was third party. I know that um, according to Patricia Canelli, he was sending her letters from Paris, and Pan had her own thing going on with this this French aristocrat. Um, so she had her thing going on, and then he had his thing with Patricia, and God knows who else. I mean, he was very promiscuous. Um, But I don't see him being deeply in love with Pan when he died. Please clarify Seven of Wands over Nine of Swords, one card. Two 
two of pentacles. There was not balance. There was no mutuality. I feel like she was a lot more attached to him than he was to her. Please clarify nine of pentacles over four of swords, one card. Ten of Pentacles. They were never going to have this. They were never going to get married and have this happy, balanced, healthy, productive union. They were both raging addicts. Um, and Jim, being a typical Sagittarius male, It takes a while for a Sagittarius male to really settle down and commit to one person. And they're 20, certainly. They're all over the place. And he was 27 when he died. Um, Pam liked to refer to herself as Mrs. Morrison, but they never got married. I guess they were common law married, but I mean, there was no monogamy to that relationship. They both had other lovers. It was the 60s, and they were in... LA. It was anything goes. Um, but that's very telling. I mean, that fits. That's so appropriate. Ten of Pentacles because she benefited from his death. She was the only heir. Please clarify temperance over three of wands, one card. Ace of Swords. The truth is, she was complicit in his death. And again, I'm bringing my bias into this. I guess I should do a video on, well, I already did that. You know, a video on a couple that I don't really know much about. I don't know that much about Kim and Kanye. So I feel like the video I did on them was pretty unbiased because neither one of those people especially fascinate me. Um, I'm not on board with the Kardashian fascination. You know, they have a lot of fans. They don't need me to support them. They've got plenty of support. But with these couples that I've chosen, I've read so much information on them. I've been fascinated at various times in my life with all three of these couples. So, the truth is, Pamela was Jim's muse. She inspired a lot of his songs and his poems. Um, he was really super into her at one time deeply in love but I feel like at the time of his death um, he wasn't in love I feel like he felt sorry for her and he just felt obligated and I do feel like guilt was a contributing factor to her overdosing on heroin just like three years after Jim's death so I'm not really saying anything new with this reading. It's just fun. It's just... It's fun. <laughs> I wanted to go on the camera with this makeup and this wig. You can see my shower cut. How do people do this all the time? Clowns, drag queens, goths. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of makeup. It's a lot of ass ache. Okay, and everyone knows, well, a lot of my viewers are younger. Um, so you may not know, but Sid Vicious was the bass guitarist for the band The Sex Pistols. They had a very short career. They didn't last long. Um, but they had that album, Nevermind the Bollocks. 
Oh my god, there are trick-or-treaters. I didn't think we would have any, so I ate most of the candy. Lo siento. Um, so there was this band called the Sex Pistols, never mind the bollocks. And there's this movie called Sid and Nancy. Courtney Love is in that movie. Sid and Nancy, she has a small role. She's uh, Nancy's friend in New York. So Sid Vicious, the bass guitarist for the Sex Pistols. Nancy Spudgeon was a notorious groupie. She was from New Jersey. So she moved to the UK to be a groupie, basically. Uh, Sid had his moon at 8 Libra, his Mercury at 12 Taurus. And so this couple, their moons and Mercury's do aspect. Interesting. Nancy Spungen had her moon at 15 Gemini, her Mercury at 4 Pisces. So their Mercury's made a sextile. And their moon's made a trine. Sid and Nancy. One of my all-time favorite movies. I love the soundtrack. It's not just the Sex Pistols. There's other other bands. Um, Haunted by the Ghost of Your Love by the Pogues. Let me find that song real quick. I was doing a private reading for a client last night and my ex had the greatest hits of Jimi Hendrix on vinyl. I got it for the new record player. He had Jimi Hendrix blaring in the other room and YouTube blocked the video. Even though it was private, unlisted, and it wasn't monetized, they blocked the videos. So I had to do a second reading for my client. Anyway. So I guess I won't play this video because copyright, but haunted the hoax. Yeah. Haunted the hoax. Sid and Nancy original soundtrack. So recommended listening. It's a good song. What was going on between Sid Vicious and Nancy Spension? At the time of Sid, at the time of Sid, he died of a heroin overdose shortly after Nancy's death. Uh, he went to Rikers, that prison in New York. He was at Rikers for about a year after, allegedly, he stabbed Nancy to death. He got a year, and then he was out on bail, and he OD'd on heroin the day my brother was born, actually. February 2nd, 1979, he OD'd. Like an hour before my brother was born. Weird. Uh, he died in New York. So, please show what was going on between Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen at the time of Nancy Spungen's death. Did we get trigger treaters? We did. You didn't give them a fuck ton of candy, did you? No. Just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I'm a candy whore. I'm a candy hoarder. I got blow pops, the little Milky Ways, and Snickers, and Twix. I think that's it. I didn't get the Reese's pumpkins. They're getting harder and harder to find. Please show in six cards what was going on between Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen at the time of Nancy Spungen's death. The High Priestess. The Magician. The Hermit. Top row is all Major Arcana. Oh my god, Temperance, Three of Wands, Nine of Swords, oh my god, what a spread. Wow. Intuition was blocked, 
there was no balance. Um, I'm not seeing deep love here. I'm not seeing harmony. I'm not seeing balance. Um, this is low vibration. That's really strong to end on Nine of Swords. I'm seeing agony, anguish, guilt. Even if Sid Vicious was not responsible for Nancy's death, even if he wasn't the one who actually stabbed her, there's a lot of guilt. There's this dark cloud. Um, he felt complicit. It was brutal. I mean, and I've read Nancy Spungen's mother's book, her mom's book, and I don't want to live this life. Because after she died, Sid sent a poem to the mom. Um, I'll go ahead and read the poem that he wrote. And like she says in that book, they didn't think that Nancy was going to live long because she had mental problems from the time she was a toddler. She had severe mental problems. They assumed that eventually she would overdose on drugs or she would suicide. Um, but it's a special kind of hell when your child is murdered no matter how old they are, when a person you have given birth to is killed, that is, that's the worst. So it's a very poignant, powerful book. Okay. So all you see when you put in, and I don't want to live this life, is the book that her mom wrote. You don't see the actual poem. Let's see, and I don't want to live this life poem. It's not a great poem, but I mean, you can tell that Sid Vicious really loved Nancy. So someone wrote a tribute poem based on the poem that Sid Vicious wrote. Okay. The original poem, who knows? I give up. But Sid Vicious sent Nancy Spendon's mom this poem, and I don't want to live this life if I can't live for you. That's how it ends. Apparently, Nancy Spungen was his first and last love. They were very young when they both died. They were in their, I guess, early 20s. Please clarify the High Priestess over Temperance one card. Knight of Cups. They weren't together long, you know, but the time they spent together was so high intensity with the fame and the fortune and the heroin addiction, you know, and they fought constantly. According to the movie, it was a very tempestuous, tumultuous, roller coaster kind of relationship. But I feel like this is saying that even though it wasn't roses and rainbows, Sid was in Nancy's service. He did have romantic feelings for her at the time of her death. Um, so I don't know. I'm not a detective. I'm not a psychic. I can't say conclusively, yes, he killed her, or no, he didn't. But this is very awkward. It's very chilly. There's no warmth to the spread. Please clarify the Magician over Three of Wands. One card. The Star. Very 
distant, very cold. What I know of heroin, I've never taken it. I've never known anyone who was a junkie, but when you're doing heroin, you're only concerned with yourself. You're in a bubble, okay? Um, it's a very cold drug. So you create this bubble and it's intensely selfish. Um, you're focused on your reaction to the drug. You're not concerned with anyone else. You're not concerned with anyone around you. Um, and that just seems like it would be really weird to me for a couple to both be doing heroin together for any length of time. I don't imagine that would be conducive to a very balanced, harmonious, life-affirming, Ten of Cups kind of relationship. Please clarify the Hermit over Nine of Swords one card. Judgment. He probably did stab her. He probably was guilty. Um, in the movie, it shows her begging him to kill her. They had a suicide pact, and he reneged. He didn't want to commit suicide. And in the movie, she says, I can't live like this anymore. Please, please just kill me. And she starts bullying him and harassing him, and he finally stabs her, and she dies. So. Yeah. It's really dark. It's really dense. It's really heavy. Now, as a special bonus, trying to think of another couple. Um, and this is just for fun, entertainment purposes. Please show in six cards were Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, Twin Flames. It's like I tell clients all the time, I don't think that any reader can tell you if someone's your Twin Flame or not. You know, I'm not even sure what I think about Twin Flames. Um, I've said it numerous times, the man who was the catalyst for me starting this channel almost two years ago, my two-year anniversary is coming up for Siren Taylor, November 18th. It's two years. Um, the man who was the catalyst for this channel, I thought at one time he was my divine masculine. I've had numerous dreams. Just a few nights ago, I had a super intense dream of this man. And we've not spoken in years. Um, but I woke up and I could just feel this pulse, this surge of energy. It was total 5D. And I wrote it down in my dream journal, my manifestation journal. Another trigger treater. God damn, there goes the candy. Um, but it's just for fun. I know a lot of people are interested in Twin Flames. I use it as a hashtag for most of my videos because that's what generates interest. And I know a lot of people they really are on a twin flame journey. I mean, I refer clients and viewers to Kurt's twin flame channel all the time because the way Kurt presents it, it seems valid. Um, but I don't have any kind of proof. I don't know for certain that I've met my twin flame or that I even have a twin flame. I don't know. So please show in six cards were Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, Twin Flames. Five of Swords. Judgment. Ace of Wands. Death. Wheel of Fortune. 
Queen of Wands. No, they weren't twin flames. They had a very sexual, karmic relationship. They married and divorced each other twice. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor said in interviews that she believed she had two soulmates. You know, she was married to, I think, seven different men. Uh, she regarded Mike Todd and Richard Burton as her two soulmates. And she regarded Richard Burton as a love of her life. Um, from what I know about the Twin Flame experience, the Twin Flame is not necessarily going to be the love of your life. You're not necessarily going to marry your Twin Flame. But these cards do not show a Twin Flame connection. I'm seeing heavy karma, and I'm seeing an emphasis on sexual attraction. And they had really good synastry. Maybe they were soulmates, but uh, there was a lot of karmic stuff with them. There was stuff to work out. There was a lot of conflict. As much as they loved each other, they couldn't stay married to each other. Uh, they couldn't find harmony together. They were both addicts, and they both had very extreme personalities, and they were both in the public eye. Please provide an energetic summation, three additional cards, for Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, soulmates or twin flames. Soulmates or twin flames. Page of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Six of Cups. They were probably soulmates. And... I'll be candid. I don't know much about reincarnation. I have no memory of my previous lives. I know there are readers who say they can tell you exactly who they were in previous lifetimes. I can't do that. Um, I remember my dreams, if my dreams are especially vivid. And sometimes my dreams are so vivid and so good that I write them down. But I don't have any memory of past lives. I've had a few soulmate experiences where it's just very intense and I meet that person and I feel like there's this familiarity, this kinship between us. I felt that a few times. But what I'm getting from this is that, admittedly, I'm an idiot when it comes to this. I don't know how it all works. I was brought up Southern Baptist in Texas. I don't know. I don't know about the chakras. I just learned about the chakras a couple of years ago. Crown chakra, the third eye chakra. My throat chakra gives me problems a lot. My third eye chakra needs a contact lens. But what I would say from these cards is that they were just starting out, so they're not that progressed. Their souls have not been around for very long, or their souls... It could have been the first time their souls came to this particular planet. Uh, so they, they were babies. You know, they were babies trying to learn how it all works and trying to work it out in the context of this very deeply felt, intense relationship. Probably when they first met, when they met a set of Cleopatra, they, bo they both knew that something was going on there. It wasn't just a sexual attraction. There was something deep and profound. But they were both, from what I know, they were in the 3D a lot. I don't know if they were on especially spiritual paths. More trick-or-treaters. What the fuck? I don't get that. Oh, and ring the doorbell twice in rapid succession. Okay, these parents need to do better raising their kids. You don't do that. You don't go to a stranger's home. I don't care if it's trick or treat, if it's Halloween, whatever. You don't ring someone's doorbell three times in rapid succession. That's total bullshit. I am so not a Pinterest mom. Your parents suck. Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, who cares? I mean, they were celebrities. They had a lot of money. They had a yacht with Picassos on it. 
you know, they had very rich lives, but they were both in the dark a lot because they were addicts. And I'm just some basic bitch in Texas passing judgment on celebrities. I don't know. I never talked to Liz or Dick. I never spent a moment in their presence. I just read all the hype. I made this jar. I learned about this. Um, Rachel Patterson is a witch in the UK. And she talked about making a witch bottle. You know, protection because I've been getting a lot of hate lately at my channel and I have the occasional client where it just drains my energy, so I made the switch bottle to protect myself, to repel the negative and bring in the positive. Melted a few candles on top, and it's just um, flower petals, baking powder, um, Goat glitter, sugar, green sugar, blue sugar, rue, dried rose petals. And I just, I feel better just looking at this, you know? I feel good looking at it. So I keep it my computer and um, I'm all about welcoming in the optimal and repelling the subpar. That's just how I roll. Everyone's different. So, happy Halloween, happy Blue Moon, happy Samhain. I'm going to eat some candy now. <laughs>